Why is it that I am sitting here in Moncton, Maryland, a small farm, not very far from where you grew up, on a small mountaintop, and yet I am talking to the most powerful wine critic, taster in the world? What kind of journey has this been for you? I was born in, in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my grandparents, my parents were dairy farmers uh, in a sort of middle-class home. I've been a lifelong resident of uh, Maryland, and uh, I love the state. I mean, I, even though I think when I started the you know the wine critic field, uh, there was a lot of pressure to move to the areas like San Francisco or New York or uh, London, uh, but I just wanted to stay here. I graduated from law school in 1973, uh, and in 1978 started the Wine Advocate. Wine was, was my passion, law was not. It was a question of can you ever make a living, you know, writing about wine or critiquing wine. And, and so I thought about starting a wine publication that was completely independent. No advertising, pay your own way, buy your own wines. And I kept talking about this with people, and people said, well, that's a great idea. It's like Consumer Reports, but for wine people. And then finally in 1983, fully left the practice of law to devote full time to, to critiquing wine. But my, my wife was 100% behind me, and, uh, and that, that has always been an important component. I think what was the watershed event of my entire career was there was a vintage in Bordeaux in 1982. It was widely criticized by the other American wine writers, and I thought it was a great, great vintage. And I wrote that and told people to buy it. And so the Americans actually sided with me, not these other well-known wine writers, and started buying this vintage up. It was then that I started seeing almost an international influence on my writings. And it just propelled me into the stratosphere of influence, gravitas, and credibility. And what Robert Parker has done is revolutionize the world of wine. In France, they call him Le Pape de Vin, the Pope of wine. There was Bacchus, and then there was Robert Parker. I mean, that's what kind of impact Robert Parker has to the world of wine. He is the most important wine writer that we have ever seen since the grape was invented. I just love what I do, and I'm serious about what I do, and I'm going to call it the way I see it. That's all I'm doing. He has a gift that's extraordinarily fine-tuned, and he found it. That's what's really strange. I suspect that maybe all of us have something at which we would be the best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Parker. Always people said, well, you must, you know, you got to have a great palate. Well, I said, well, it's a palate that recognizes character and flavor and joy. I mean, I mean, because the, I tell them, no matter what you learn about wine, the bottom line is if it doesn't provide pleasure, it's of no interest. Everything you've accomplished professionally, if you want to talk a little bit personally as well, what is it that you're most proud of? Hmm. Uh, whew. Well, there's a lot of things to be proud of. Uh, I think my wife. That's it. Now, the, my marriage. <laughs>